I didn't know what an arborist was. The first time I heard the word arborist, I was like, what is that? What is, what is that? <laughs> like, why is that such an interesting word? Like, I've never, would never have fathomed that it meant tree, like tree person. Hello, that's who you are, you're a tree person. Okay, cool. An arborist is basically a tree doctor. Our role really is to love trees and love telling people about trees and love taking care of trees. Trees provide so many valuable contributions. You know, their habitat, their mental health, their wind breaks, their food crops. And that's why I think it's important that we play an important part in making sure that they're an asset and not a liability. I came to the green industry working at a golf course. So I um, invested a lot of personal time into learning about biology, about how trees grow. Um, at that point, there was only one certified arborist in the city at all. So I was fortunate to be able to work on an apprenticeship kind of mentorship thing there. I'm still the f only female certified arborist in the city. And that could, you know, hopefully that's going to change because my team are working towards getting their certification exams. It's a, a pretty much a male dominant industry because of the physical demands of the job. Fewer women are capable of doing some of the heavy, aggressive types of climbing. Although there's some outstanding female climbers who are competitive and capable at the level of many men I know. So that's not, you know, that's not to discount them. We've been fortunate to have a lot of great diverse staff members in. They have experience with horticulture. They've taken an environmental sciences degree. They might have taken a course in um, landscape design or like one of our Two of our employees actually work at greenhouses and now are looking to move from horticulture into arboriculture so that they can get into the big stuff, right? Nobody, unfortunately, not everyone can be as passionate as we are about trees and that's, that's fair. But as long as we can give you an inkling on how important they really are to have, our main goal is to preserve the tree and help it sustain itself the, the longest we can. Like, I feel really lucky that a lot of the clients that we have love their trees as much as we love their trees. And that's really an interesting relationship. It, it's all about uh, public education is really important. And the whole purpose of that is to get the consumer aware more about what's happening with their tree, answer a lot of the questions that they have so that they're more alert to things that are kind of happening within their tree and be able to respond to them in a proactive way rather than a reactionary way. So Lethbridge is a pretty unique environment. It's a prairie forest. Essentially, initially, there, all there was was prairie glasslands. There was the odd uh, naturalized uh, tree stand along a river basin or uh, along the coolies. But for the most part, it was flat land with not, no other vegetation. And so when we think of the establishment of the prairies, um, the shelter belts and the hand planting of trees was critical for a lot of reasons. When urban centers start, we have to bring trees into the community. And as trees mature, there's been a lot of self-propagation in some cases in the older neighborhood. The original species were poplar. Uh, a lot of them were hand dug from the river valley and brought in because people didn't have a nursery down the street. Uh, species were quite limited. There was spruce, there was maybe green ash and elm, mantle, maybe both kind of the most popular um, common trees for the or, or prairie provinces initially. And, and most of the plants that are here are introduced. And so that brings threats also to those, those trees because they are prone to diseases and insects that the native species are not typically exposed to. Mostly wood boring insects are the biggest, most serious concern because they kill a tree um, without uh, control mechanisms being implemented. I love going to work. It's great. And my everyday is different every day. It's never the same, for sure. My future in terms of where I see myself going is I would love to become certified. That's the goal. I'm currently studying for my ISA. A colleague of ours that we used to work with, she just recently got certified and it just was inspiring. It was like, yes, okay, she did it. Now I want to do it. I want to be on that page. More people in trees would be amazing. That'd be, oh, it'd be so much fun. Just don't go in the same canopy as me because like, I don't like to share, but no, I'm kidding. I'm the warmer. <laughs> 
Marina is such an inspiring person and she has given herself such a wonderful background and like having her as a mentor is great because people know her. She's well known in this industry. She's been a strong advocate for having women in it. And so here I am today having worked for myself and for other people. I have a really thriving small business with a lot of women and a dog. <laughs> I hope in some little way, someone will say, oh, that girl, you know, that ladybug, you know, she made a difference and that's what's really matters.